Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And this week we're gonna talk again about my quest for better upstream bandwidth. I've made some progress and I might be getting there. And we're gonna do an update in this video and talk about how to prepare my home network for it. Let's get to it. So it looks as though we're going to get Gigabit Pro here at my house from Comcast. That's the big news. It's been kind of a stop and start kind of thing, but there's a good chance it's happening now. I've gotten a couple of different phone calls over the last week and it looks like we're on the way. So I will keep you posted on that. And if you are curious about Gigabit Pro, you can go over to the Comcast Xfinity internet plan page here. Now, by default, they're going to offer you all of their regular coax stuff. But if you look at the bottom of the page where they have all the different tier options, uh, Gigabit Pro is one of the offerings. It says you do have to order it online. And if it's available in your area, you should see it as an option. And if you don't, give Comcast a call and just see if they can get it over to where you live. They're going to try to talk you out of it because this is certainly uh, more than what most people need here at uh, 2 gigabits per second symmetrically. Uh, but it's something that I need because I upload a lot of video files. And what's funny is we're not uploading terabytes a day, but we're uploading videos to a bunch of different platforms, Plex and YouTube and Amazon and a few other things that we're doing. I'm sending video projects to Jake, who is editing a lot of the videos here on the channel. We're pushing a lot of large files around that aren't, again, in the aggregate all that large, but the time it takes to send what little files we do have to transmit is really killing productivity. And although this is 300 bucks a month, I think it's going to save me a lot in the end, given that we don't have to babysit uploads anymore. And going from the 12 megabits per second upload I have now to 2000, that's a pretty big uptick here. Uh, but I do have to make some adjustments to the home network now to be able to make use of that full speed because my home network is only gigabit ethernet at the moment. And we're going to explore some of those options as we work our way through the video here. Now, if you're curious about this Comcast Gigabit Pro and what it's all about, uh, there's a great post on Medium from a guy named James Watt. Uh, he got the service about three years ago. And it's funny, his experience has been very much similar to what mine has been so far, at least in trying to get the service installed. And you can read all about the installation process and his satisfaction with it on the link you see here on screen. And I've really uh, enjoyed reading his post now multiple times. Now the hardware they apparently hook up in your house, at least according to that post, is this massive big iron router from Juniper Systems. And you don't make use of most of it. In fact, they're just going to have a single SF uh, thing here outputting the network to whatever equipment you're using for a router in your home. Uh, it will support, of course, 10 gigabits in total, so that 2 gigabit speed is certainly going to be uh, more than okay over the interface, but I'm going to have to upgrade my router. So a few weeks ago, we did a video about my new router, this uh, uh, great little uh, device from Unify called the Dream Machine, and we have to upgrade it because the Dream Machine can only handle about 850 megabits per second of throughput. Uh, because it's doing some of the packet inspection and a few other things for security. And because its processor really can't keep up with that uh, two gigabit speed, we're going to have to go to something better. And it was a little bit of a worrying thing initially for me because I really like the Unify stuff. I'm all in on the Unify networking just because it's enterprise level but affordable enough for somebody to use at home. And if you really want to learn more about networking, it is very easy to get into the networking weeds and learn how to actually set up a network properly. I'm getting there myself. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun to play around with this stuff. And they do have a faster version of the Dream Machine called the Dream Machine Pro, appropriately enough. And although it doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi, uh, that's not a big deal for me because I have Unify access points already all over the house. And I should be able to just migrate my configuration over to the new unit and get going again. Now, what's nice about this unit is that it is spec higher, so it can handle the faster speed. Also of note is it has a hard drive spot here, so you can also use this as a Unify security camera server too with the DVR built right into it. And the price point on the router is surprisingly reasonable, 379. Uh, that does not include a hard drive, but really for the purposes of the network here, this is going to be more than adequate. It also has the right kinds of ports as well. So it's got uh, eight 
gigabit ports for the uh, LAN network. And then you have two different options on the WAN side. So we could, of course, just plug it into a typical uh, gigabit uh, port there and get going. But uh, because we're running at two gigabits, we can use its SFP plus WAN port to bring over the network from that Juniper device. And then it also has one of those ports on the LAN side. So we can pass through that higher speed to my switch that I bought last year to test out some 10 gig equipment we've been reviewing off and on here on the channel. Uh, this one's from Netgear. I'll talk more about it in a minute, but it does have that SF port on there. So we should be able to connect this to the router at 10 gigabits and be able to pass through that full uh, two gigabit speed to the rest of the network. And that was a big selling point on this one for me. Uh, also of note is that it could handle upgrades to the Comcast connection if they ever come in the future because the router can handle three and a half gigabits per second uh, in their uh, spec sheet here. So we have a little bit of room to grow later. And I could of course build my own router with a PC and maintain it myself, but I've really gotten to the point where I like to buy things that work out of the box and get updated by the manufacturer and are mostly hands off at this point because I make videos for a living now and I'd rather focus on that than trying to keep my IT working. And until I have an IT director, this is gonna be just fine, I think, for our purposes here. So now the big question is, how do we get this two gig service out to the parts of the house where I need it the most? Now I do have ethernet running to the places where I need to have a reliable connection but that ethernet cabling is only CAT5E. I put it in about a decade ago when CAT6 cabling was very expensive. And as a result, those cables are probably not going to be good for 10 gigabit given the distance that we're running, but it might be okay for slower speeds that are still faster than gigabit. So it looks as though, at least from this page on Netgear's uh, site, that you can get by with CAT5E and a five gig connection and certainly the two and a half gigs should work over that as well. So we shouldn't have to do uh, much upgrading of the wiring here to at least take advantage of the full connection. Uh, but one thing I'll probably do at some point is run some CAT6 cabling down here in the studio so that I can do uh, 10 gig connections between some of the computers that are doing editing and that sort of thing. But in the short term, uh, it looks like the wiring I have should be good enough to take advantage of the full connection provided we upgrade switches and some of the equipment that those cables are plugged into. So let me show you what I'm thinking about here insofar as getting all of this stuff to work. And I would love to hear from all of you who know more about this than I do as to whether or not this strategy I've got is a good idea. Uh, so what we should be able to do here is run the SFP uh, out of this Juniper over to the uh, Dream Machines WAN port. Uh, that's a fiber connection that'll likely be 10 gigabits per second. Uh, connected to the ethernet on the uh, Dream Machine, because these are all the LAN ports here, we'll have our gigabit devices we're currently using here in the house. So I'll have a couple of things directly connected to it and a few others that I'll run through another switch. And then what we'll do is run another SFP between uh, the Dream Machine and the uh, Netgear switch that I've got here right into its little port there. And that way we can get the two and a half gig speed uh, going out to the devices that we connect to the ethernet ports on this one. So we'll have a couple of devices here in the studio connected to it. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, connect this port to my upstairs office where I've already got an ethernet connection. So we're just going to take it out of my existing gigabit switch and pop it into this one. And on the other end of it, uh, I got to find something affordable to put there. So I could get another one of these, but they're like $350. And I think this is one of the least expensive uh, multi gigabit switches that are out there. And to be honest, I really don't need 10 gigabits running upstairs. I really can't get that much speed given that we're only running over cat 5e cable. Uh, so I really just want to find a two and a half gig switch. And apparently there's not one available at the very moment but it looks as though QNAP is about to come out with an affordable uh, 2.5 gigabit switch that I think will work perfectly up there. So we'll basically connect it upstairs to downstairs over that uh, connection to the 10 gig switch. We'll have a two and a half gig connection negotiated between these two devices. And then my Mac upstairs, my little MacBook that I use along with uh, my PC will connect up to the ports on this one 
to get the two and a half gig connection going to my secondary space up there. Now, of course, to connect to these faster switches, we need faster network interface cards. I'm gonna probably get two of these from QNAP. These are 10 gig adapters. I would get one for my gaming computer that's up in that secondary office, and then another one for my production machine, which is right next to me here. Uh, what's nice about the 10 gig adapters is that they will work fine at the two and a half gig speed upstairs. But down here, if I do run the CAT6 cabling to those specific machines, the production computer can benefit from the faster speed. So this will probably be what we'll put into the PCs. Uh, for other devices like my Mac and whatever else I'm testing, uh, I got this pluggable 2.5 gig adapter free of charge and full disclosure from Pluggable a few weeks ago. It performs great for a USB adapter. We were getting the full 2.5 gig performance out of it even work nicely on a regular old USB 3 connection in addition to the USB-C option. Uh, so that'll probably be my go-to dongle to have around. And then I've also got a couple of these 10 gig Thunderbolt adapters. I bought this one from Akitio when we first started playing around with the 10 gig networking stuff. And then I got another one in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program from Sabrent. And of course, these are 10 gigs, so if we do make those network upgrades, I can take advantage of that on my Mac or Thunderbolt-equipped Windows devices. Now, with that faster speed, my intent would be to start uploading and streaming at 4K. Uh, right now, I'm only streaming at 720p, given some of my bandwidth limitations. And of course, my 1080p uploads are being done for the same reason. But I recently upgraded my production computer, which can handle 4K at up to 60 frames per second. And I just haven't been taking advantage of it because it just takes so long to upload the videos. Now, this wouldn't make a big difference to most people who are watching on phones or tablets. But if you do have a 4K TV, uh, the videos will look a little bit sharper. And I might do some extra work around the channel to spruce things up over time. Uh, my cameras only do 4K 30, but that, I think, would still be an improvement over the 1080p 30 we're doing right now. So stay tuned. More to come on that, and hopefully all of this works. And I would love to hear from you about what you all think about my plans here, whether or not this networking uh, strategy that I have makes sense. Should there be other things that I'm looking at? I'm trying to make use of all the things I already have, including the wiring to start with. And my philosophy is always to start with what you have and then upgrade to other things as you need to. And I'm not going to know what I need until I get things working and figure out uh, where some of the shortfalls are in my current setup. So again, I just love to hear from you as to whether or not you think this will work. And hopefully within the next couple of weeks here, this will get going and I'll keep you posted on the progress of this network connection. And you'll know it's there once the videos start going at 4K. Uh, and hopefully, fingers crossed, everything gets hooked up and we're good to go here before the fall. Now, this week's wrap-up is being brought to you by all of you. And we had a bunch of folks contribute via Super Chat on a few of the live streams we did over the last week. I want to thank Zam, Carol, and Respy Bob for their regular contributions during those streams and for just popping in every time we do one. And I also want to thank Red Robbo's Workshop for his Super Chat. Also, we had a few new supporters join us this week. Uh, Suresh Kumar... Uh, joined us on the YouTube membership program, and Alexander Greenum signed up via Patreon. I want to thank everyone who contributed this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and everyone who watches on a regular basis, too, because all of those things equal channel growth. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution. You can do that via my donor box page or... You can do it right here on YouTube through the YouTube membership program and get your cool loyalty badges here. Uh, we also support Patreon as well. Now this week, we did a couple of fun things. On the live streams, we uh, tested a new gaming keyboard from Logitech, which I still have right next to me here. And we also were testing a few two and a half and five gig ethernet adapters, go figure, uh, that came in via the Amazon Vine program from Sabrent and we'll have a review of that a little later this week. On the Extras channel, we didn't upload anything, but I'll probably unbox something for it later this week. And then on the main channel, we had a couple of fun reviews. Uh, the first are these really neat tablet and phone stands that we were playing around with in a live stream a couple of days ago. Uh, what's nice about these is that you just put stuff on the front of them and they stick there and they actually work really well. So you can check out the full review 
uh, on the master playlist down below. The most popular video of the week, of course, was the Minis Forum Desk Mini Ryzen PC. This is a mini PC powered by a Ryzen processor, a very nicely performing device. So if you were looking for a good little gaming mini PC, that might be worth considering. And then we also did a review of the Wise Lock that we installed during a live stream about two weeks ago. So lots of good stuff. And again, you can see all of that down below in the master playlist. Now this week, we've got a couple of fun things planned. I actually shot a bunch of videos already. Uh, my next project is to unbox and start playing around with the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. And depending on where things are at right now, I'm shooting this a day earlier than I usually do, you might be seeing this live stream before you actually see this video. Uh, this is a very low cost video switcher from Blackmagic. We looked at the regular ATEM Mini a few months ago. Uh, that one I think sells for $349 or something. Uh, this one costs about $200 more, but it can stream right out of the box. And that's the big difference between this one and the non-pro version. And I'll be doing a video about the differences later this week. We'll have the review of the Sabrent uh, Ethernet adapters, which has already been shot, even with a thumbnail, as you can see here. So that's coming up. And we'll also have a review of that Logitech keyboard, among some other things, depending on how things go. Uh, one of those things might be the Mode device, which is a, a CD drive emulator for the Dreamcast and the Saturn. And I have to start taking my consoles apart to test it. So that might be a live stream we'll see later on this week as well. Now, if you want to be notified anytime we do anything here on the channel, you can click that bell and you'll be notified through your mobile device and email whenever we upload a video or go live. So that might be something you'll want to do. We have a lot of other channels that you can follow me on. Uh, the big one is my Amazon page here where you can follow me on Amazon because when we do live streams, we often simulcast those over to Amazon and the quality sometimes is better on Amazon than it is on YouTube. So you may wanna watch me there versus the YouTube stream. Uh, if you wanna engage with the channel, you can sign up for my very infrequent email list. We only let you know when there's a big event going on. Uh, the Facebook group is another great way to connect. We do a lot of fun stuff in there, and I get a lot of ideas for this show from the Facebook group. And then, of course, we've got my store where I sell previously used items that I purchased for review. And I'll probably be getting some stuff up there in the next week or two. And if you want to be notified every time we update the store, if you go to lon.tv slash store alert, you will get an email to let you know whenever we add something to the store. So you can jump in and grab what you're looking for. If I reviewed something that you would like, uh, let me know if, it, if you don't see it on the store because I might have it and just forgot to list it. So there's always stuff that has to get out of here and I'm always happy to uh, share the love with all of you viewers. So be sure to email me at lon at lon.tv if you're looking for something specific. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Thank you all for your continued support and viewership. With any luck, we'll get the connection upgraded here so we can provide content to you faster and greatly improve our productivity. I am looking forward to that and I can't wait to share the experience with all of you. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.